Are you looking to cook a ribeye roast on your Weber kettle grill? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up zone cooking using the Weber charcoal baskets. And if you have the Weber Summit Kamado or the Master Touch Premium, I'll show you guys how to use a diffuser plate to get low and slow temperatures. But which method works best and which one tastes better? Let's dive in. Okay, if you guys haven't already, go check out my previous video on how to set up a diffuser plate for the Weber Master Touch Premium. It also applies for the Weber Summit Kamado. Basically, a diffuser plate does exactly what the title suggests. It diffuses the heat, giving you nice, even, low and slow temperatures. In that video, I actually go over a lot of useful information. For example, how to set up your coals, how to place the wood chunks, and I also talk about why you should use a drip tray and add water to keep the cooking environment nice and moist. It basically prevents your meat from drying out. So if you haven't already, go watch that video. In this video, I'm not gonna go over the details on how to set up a diffuser plate. Now, with that being said, I also wanna mention something else. It seems like the Master Touch Premium has actually been discontinued. I don't know for sure, but some of my fans have been messaging me saying that they can't get a hold of this grill anymore, and Weber has pulled it off of their website. I can't confirm, but as of right now shooting this video, it is off of Weber's website and it does seem like it is discontinued. But that's okay. If you have the Weber Summit Kamado or if you made your own customizable diffuser plate, this video still applies. Now there's some obvious benefits of low and slow cooking using a diffuser plate. Maintaining that low and slow temperature and using a diffuser plate to diffuse the heat obviously keeps the meat really tender and juicy. But is it overkill? Because after all, we are cooking ribeye. And ribeye is known for being really juicy, really flavorful because of that extra marbling and fat naturally in the meat. Do we actually need to do low and slow temperatures? Is it enough just to do indirect heat using the charcoal baskets? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Now I did also wanna mention that for this cook, I am gonna be using apple chunk woods. And I'm only gonna use one chunk of wood because since it is a ribeye roast and it does generally cook pretty quickly, there's no need to over smoke this thing. I did prepare the chunk of wood last night. I did soak it in water. I think that's a really important crucial step. You allow that chunk of wood to regain most of its moisture. As long as you remember the next day to take it out and let it dry in the morning before starting your cook, just you know, wrap it in some paper towels or something just to kind of get that excess of moisture out. I've found in previous cook that if you do soak the wood chunk overnight, it does allow it to kind of last a bit longer. It smokes up a little bit better, a little bit more cleaner, and it's just more flavorful. So I highly recommend that you do soak your wood chunks. You do have to remember that these things could have been sitting in your local hardware store or your barbecue grill store for a really long time, and they might be really dried out and you might not get that really good clean smoke. Another thing that I want to mention was I did salt my ribeye roast the night before when I did soak the wood chunks. I did salt it with kosher salt, and I just allowed the salt to completely penetrate the meat and really soak in and, and just make sure that the entire ribeye roast is flavorful. So if you do that ahead of time, you put it in the fridge and just leave it overnight, theoretically that salt should go all the way through the meat and you'll have a really flavorful ribeye at the end of it. The next morning, make sure you take out the ribeye roast and give it enough time to get to room temperature. You don't want it really, really cold. And that would be a perfect time to also season it with your favorite seasoning and prepare it for the barbecue grill. Okay, so with that being said, let's prepare the barbecue grill. Okay, now let's set up for the diffuser plate. So again, in this video, I'm not gonna go over how to actually set up low and slow smoking using the Master Touch Premium in the diffuser plate. I have a video on that entire process. So I'll link it right here, go watch it. And in that video, I go over everything from how to set up the coal, how to place the lid and the diffuser plate in there, how much capacity the smoke ring can actually handle. I even talk about how to maintain temperatures. So. Definitely go watch that video if you're interested, but right now, we're gonna go ahead and get everything set up.
roast looks really good, and we're about the halfway mark. The internal temperatures are not quite there yet, but as you guys can see, using the diffuser plate method, this thing's really, really juicy as it is, and we're starting to get a really nice spark on the ribeye, so it's looking really good. We'll find out at the end which one's better. So the ribeye roast is almost done using the diffuser plate method. And you know, it took a little bit over two and a half hours or so. It's definitely a much slower method. So it's a fairly large ribeye roast, but you know, it takes a little longer. And so far, the results look really, really good. So I'm gonna take the roast out and we're gonna go ahead and lightly wrap it in aluminum foil. And we're gonna continue to monitor the temperatures until it hits 135 degrees for that perfect medium rare. really good, but now let's move on to indirect cooking using the charcoal baskets. So for today's cook, I'm gonna be going ahead and using the Kingsford Trusty Original. I really like these charcoal briquettes because they're just dependable. Overall, they do a great job, and I get some decent life out of them. So we're gonna be using these today for the indirect charcoal baskets method. And actually, we'll also be using them for the diffuser plate method, so both methods. So I highly recommend that you guys invest in a charcoal chimney starter. This particular model is made by Weber, and it just makes your life a whole lot easier when you're trying to start a charcoal grill. You literally just dump all your charcoal in there, and then you use some sort of a lighter cube or fire starter, and that's it. Give it about 20 minutes or so, wait until the smoke kind of subsides, and the very top of the coal start to ash over. So I actually really like using these Weber lighter cubes, and they work just fine. I usually just use one and that usually gets the, uh, the job done. Good rule of thumb is give it about 20 minutes or so before you actually dump out the coals. But yeah, just makes things a lot easier. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is kind of set up for zone cooking. First, obviously, we're gonna get the coals started and get the chimney lit but I'm generally gonna just kinda keep the coals on this side and put the ribeye on the other side. And that should give me a nice indirect zone. And as you guys can see, I do have some leftover charcoal from a previous cook. That's fine, we'll leave them in there. It's just gonna add to the heat. Okay, let's get this thing started. It's important to note that if you guys haven't already seen my video on the most common mistakes people make with a Weber kettle charcoal grill, or really any charcoal grill for that matter, Go watch my video, I go into incredible detail, I give you guys all of the common mistakes people make, and I also give you guys some of my recommendations for some accessories for some stuff that you guys can buy to really make your life a lot easier. For example, this chimney starter and the charcoal basket. So if you haven't already, go watch that video. And in general, I do have a video reviewing the Weber Kettle grills. And really, the reason why I think they're the best grills that you can buy, especially if you're a first-time grill buyer. So the Weber Kettle Grill is really unmatched when it comes to grilling. Of course, there's some really cool stuff out there like the Summit Kamado, which actually is my favorite grill, and I hope to update one day. Now, this particular model is actually the Weber Master Touch Premium, which comes with this hinged lid and the diffuser plate that allows you to do some smoking. As I said, I think this has been discontinued. Uh, it looks like it's been discontinued because I don't see it on the Weber website anymore. But I also have a full review on that and a six month update. So definitely go and check out my previous videos. <laughs> So 
while we let the chimney starter do its thing, let's talk about seasoning real quick. Okay, so we do have our ribeye roast right here. Basically what you wanna do is season your roast with your favorite rub. I have my own favorite rub that I like to use, but if you don't have a favorite, it's always safe to just go ahead and do salt, black pepper, and garlic. I highly recommend you guys use kosher salt. Kosher salt is salt for seasoning meats and proteins. Table salt is more for baking or as a table salt for after the fact. So can't go wrong with kosher salt, black pepper. Just make sure you go ahead and grind your pepper kind of coarse and garlic. Now you can also use the steak seasoning at your local grocery store. Those work just fine or the barbecue seasoning. Just try to avoid things that have a lot of brown sugar. A little bit of brown sugar is okay, but too much will tend to burn and kind of taste kind of weird. So I highly recommend you guys salt your ribeye roast the night before and just leave it in the fridge overnight. And then this morning I actually went ahead and finished seasoning it. kind of want to generally apply a pretty generous amount of seasoning. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the meat out of the way because we're smoking quite a bit and all that smoke's actually really bad smoke and we don't want that to get in our ribeye roast. So I'm going to put the ribeye roast away for now. I'm done seasoning it and we'll bring it out when things are ready. So this is actually a really good example of bad smoke. You don't want this type of smoke. This is white smoke. This is basically combustion. And one of the most common questions that I get asked is, when do you know when to start smoking? Well, this is white smoke. You don't want this type of smoke. This is combustion smoke, and it's gonna give the protein or the meat that you're trying to cook a really tainted flavor. Now, obviously, we're just starting the charcoal grill right now, so this is a bad example, but you're gonna see something very similar when I put the wood chunk in. And basically, you wanna wait until all that burns off, and you'll actually start smoking the ribeye roast when you start seeing a blue-tinted smoke. So white smoke is bad, blue tinted smoke is good. So basically the blue smoke actually happens when the charcoals get lit and hot enough. Basically the order that you should be seeing is white smoke, then a grayish smoke, and then finally when the coals are hot enough, a blue tinted smoke. And the deeper the blue, the better, which basically means you can start smoking your ribeye roast. Okay, so now you can see that a lot of the smoke has kind of settled down a bit and uh, we're not getting as much smoke and we're starting to see flames popping out from the top. A lot of people will make the mistake of dumping their charcoal chimney starter right now, but it's actually not ready yet. The very top of the chimney starter, the charcoal has not started ashing over yet. So that's a clear indication that we're not ready. So I estimate probably another five to 10 minutes before we'll start seeing those ashing over and we're ready to dump. Okay, now we're just starting to see the charcoals ashing over. So the chimney starter has basically done its job and we're gonna go ahead and dump these coals. It's kind of hard to get this on camera, but we're also seeing a lot of flames shooting out of this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and make a pocket for the wood chunk that I'm gonna put in there. And I'm gonna be using apple for my wood chunk. Um, I just wanna kinda make a pocket so it doesn't hit the grill grate. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but I think this would be a pretty good spot right there. Okay, and we're gonna just kinda let the charcoal settle a bit, and then I'll go ahead and put the wood chunk. So this is the apple wood chunk that I pre-soaked last night, and then I allowed to fully dry this morning. We pre-soak it to just keep the wood chunk nice and moist. This will actually let it burn a bit more cleaner and a bit longer. And we're only gonna use one today because the indirect method, the ribeye roast is gonna kinda of be done fairly quickly. And this is a pretty large wood chunk, so I feel like it's gonna give it plenty of smoke. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in right now. And then we're gonna let this fully ignite and burn, burn off all of the white smoke. Then we're gonna see a little bit of gray smoke. And then when we start seeing a blue tinted smoke, we're gonna add the drip tray and the ribeye roast. So this thing's already ignited and we're already getting some of that white smoke. I'm gonna leave the lid open for now and just kind of let it burn for a bit and then we'll close the lid and just kind of allow the temperatures to settle a bit and let the smoke kind of fully burn through so we can get that blue tint smoke. Now you can use any flavored wood chunks that you want. You can use hickory, you can use apple like I am, or cherry, 
ribeye really takes to almost anything. <laughs> it's a very flavorful roast. Uh, or you can use, you know, nothing at all if that's what you want. I mean, it's entirely up to you. I haven't really done apple, so I wanted to give it a try. Okay, and it looks like the wood has fully ignited, so we're gonna go ahead and close the lid and just let it kind of settle down a bit so we can get that blue tint. I'm gonna leave my top vent wide open, and the bottom vent is also gonna be wide open. We'll go ahead and fine tune these in a bit. Our temperature is skyrocketing. We're gonna definitely pass the 400 mark, probably even the 500 mark. Okay, yeah, so these coals are fully lit. That's a good sign. Obviously, we're not gonna do the ribeye roast at 450 or 500 degrees, so I'm gonna try to keep the internal temperature of the barbecue around 300 to 350 degrees. Now, for the diffuser plate in low and slow, we're gonna do things a lot differently. We're gonna try to stay between 250 and 275. But for the indirect method, 300 to 350 should be just fine. We're gonna monitor the internal temperatures of the roast using a digital wireless thermometer, so we'll be okay. So as you guys can see, we're getting a lot of white smoke. This is not the type of smoke that we want to actually cook our ribeye roast in. So for example, if I lift up the lid right now, it's gonna look really cool on camera, but it's not gonna taste good when you try to eat that ribeye roast. So yeah, it looks pretty cool, but that's definitely not the smoke that we want. piece is still burning away, we're gonna go ahead and add our drip tray. And again, you don't need anything fancy. This is pretty shallow, but this is a really cheap aluminum tray that I bought, I think, off of the 99 cent store. Definitely don't wanna burn myself, but it should fit in it nicely. There we go. Just try not to poke a hole in it. So this is gonna do two things. It's gonna catch all of the juices, all of the drippings from the ribeye roast, keeping the grill relatively clean. And then we're gonna go ahead and add water. And the water is gonna keep the cooking environment nice and moist, which is gonna result in a really, really juicy ribeye roast. And even if we were doing low and slow, for the diffuser plate method, I'm still gonna use water in a drip tray. It's just good practice. I have about, what, three cups of water in here? Okay, so that looks pretty good. We have enough water in there. We can always add more later. The wood's kind of still smoking this like white gray smoke. So it's not quite ready yet. I do see a little bit more gray, which is a good sign. And it looks like we're gonna get to that blue stage fairly quickly. So let's go ahead and close the lid and let's start letting the temperatures kind of get there. Before we do that, let's go ahead and put the, the grate on there. Make sure everything fits right. And it does. And it's really, really important to clean your grates. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. It's really beautiful weather here in California. I'm just excited to start grilling again. You know, we're basically fast approaching spring. It's crazy that, you know, we're already almost in spring season. Feels like the other day we're, you know, celebrating Christmas and New Year's, so time definitely flies by. But, you know, California is interesting because the weather is almost always nice. I mean, we do get our occasional rainstorms, but today is basically jacket weather. And um, it's exciting to be able to grill again. I know some of you guys out there are probably in climates where it's still cold or you're still having rainy seasons, and hopefully you guys will start grilling really, really soon. Okay, we're still getting a lot of smoke. This is definitely more of grayish smoke, so we're almost there. Let's go ahead and start dialing in the temperatures. I'm gonna close the top vent about halfway. And let's go ahead and set the bottom vent 
to the smoke setting. Okay, we're definitely getting blue smoke now, but our temperatures are really, really high. So we went ahead and closed down the vents. We're gonna give the barbecue some time to adjust. I've actually had to close the top vent more. It's barely cracked now. And hopefully that really lowers the temperatures. While we're waiting for that to happen, I did wanna mention that I will be using a digital thermometer to monitor the temperatures. This is the Meter Plus. I'll probably do a review on this in the future. I have the standalone Meter Plus, and I also have the Meter Block. And these are pretty good thermometers. Uh, I'll definitely do a review on them. They have some pros and they have some big cons as well, but I feel like they're probably the best thermometers, digital wireless thermometers on the market right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get this ready. And let's go ahead and bring out the ribeye roast and we'll get it probed. Okay, so I apologize guys. I did run out of time and obviously some sunlight, but basically this is about an hour in and the meter probe is telling me that we still have another 35 minutes or so left, but this is what the ribeye roast looks like when we do the indirect method. So we have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bark that's forming. And just look at that fat. I mean, we're really getting a really nice bark on this thing. Okay, so we basically got 35 minutes left and then we'll take this out and let it rest. Okay guys, the ribeye is off the grill. I went ahead and let it kind of continue on to an internal temperature of 128, 129, because my wife wanted it at 135, which is still medium rare. But this is what the ribeye looks like, and it looks phenomenal. Okay, so what are my final thoughts? Obviously, both ribeye roasts looked amazing, but which one performed better? Well, here's the pros and cons of each. The indirect method using the charcoal baskets is really simple to do, and you don't need a diffuser plate or any other added you know, accessories. Basically, what comes with the grill is good enough to get you going. I also like the indirect method because it's a lot faster. You just kind of put the ribeye roast off to the side, away from the coals, and you let it do its thing. And generally speaking, because the temperatures are a bit higher, your ribeye roast is done a lot quicker. Now, you can argue that it's not as moist or as tender as using the low and slow diffuser plate method, but getting your ribeye roast a lot faster may outweigh that con. Now let's talk about the diffuser plate. The diffuser plate does take a little longer to set up and it's a little bit nerve wracking in the beginning to dial in that temperature correctly. But I am gonna give the advantage to the diffuser plate low and slow method because the ribeye roast was a bit more tender and juicier. With that being said though, it wasn't like miles ahead of the indirect method. I feel like if you have a special occasion or the time to do the low and slow diffuser plate method, go for it. Other than that, 
the indirect charcoal basket method did just fine. So that's it for me guys. Make sure you check out some of my other videos where I talk about cookware such as cast iron, carbon steel, or stainless steel skillets, and other barbecue techniques. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care everybody. Hey everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified of my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.